Former wrestler Matt Hoover wanted to compete in the toughest triathlon in the world, the Kona Ironman. His message, set a goal and see it through. I'm not motivated by waking up and saying, I look pretty good today. I need to have something to reach for. An Ironman, for people who don't know what an Ironman is, it's a 2.4 mile swim in the ocean, followed by a 112 mile bike ride, and then you end it off with a marathon, 26.2 mile run in one day. I can't think of anything harder. Tonight, Marie too. I was intimidated because I'm like, I see all these thin people. I mean, amazingly fit people. You know, no body fat. And I think that's the main reason I did it. Sometimes you need to see a chubby guy taking off to do something that he's not supposed to. And when this came along, I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it to inspire myself, but I'm going to do it to get that guy off the couch who's wondering, what the heck am I doing here? Hey, athletes, how many of you going to be an Iron Man? I'm excited because it's like all of his hard work and months of his training and... Oh, it was over there too? I'm excited. It's pretty amazing. I'm in Kona in the World Championships for Ironman. And I was like crying. I'm like standing in the water. I'm like, okay, get it together, man. You got to swim. So I still got a little bit of tears. All of a sudden, this cannon goes off. And I get kicked right in the face, right in the jaw. Bam! I'm like, okay. 1,700 people in the water, all starting at the same time. It was just white water all around you. And then I really just kind of started enjoying what was happening to me. I was like, you know, I'm swimming along. I'm like, look at those fish. Meanwhile, you're doing something you're not supposed to be able to do. And I was just enjoying it. Here he comes, Matt Hoover. The swim wasn't bad. I did the swim in just over an hour and a half. And I get changed, and then it's time to start off on the bike. I'm feeling pretty good. All right. See you later. <laughs> and then you get out in the middle of the Kona. It's, it's not desert, I guess, because it's not sand, but there's just black lava everywhere. It was 105 degrees out here on this bike, and probably about 50 miles into the bike ride. Your feet, for me personally, really started hurting. And uh, with probably about 30 miles left, I started getting a little queasy in the stomach, and I threw up for the first time. I always think back to The Biggest Loser when I'm doing something tough or something that I shouldn't be doing. I remember the night I was laying on my couch with a bag of chips on my gut and a beer in my hand thinking, I should try and go on that show. I wonder what would happen. And I think I'm not alone in that. I think a lot of people lay around and think of all the things they could be doing, but they don't actually get off the couch and go. And that's when you start to see those changes. You know, seeing my wife and kids and all my other family there to support me, it, it gives you a boost. It, you don't hurt. And I actually probably smiled, and that kept me going. That's coming in pretty soon. <laughs> so we come into the transition, the last transition to start the run. I get off the bike and I take my first couple of steps. I'm like, this hurts. This hurts right now. It took me almost two hours to go five miles. I was well below my pace that I needed to make to finish. Because to be an official finisher, you have to finish in under 17 hours. And that's my goal. Come on, Matt. How's it going, Matt? Hurting. And up comes this guy on a scooter, and he says, I'm the sweeper. And he says, if you don't get going, I'm going to have to pull you off the course. You're not going to make a cutoff. They pull you off the course. Your race is done. And they already pulled some people off because there's no way you can make it. He says, next time I see you, you have to be running. Come on, man. You can do it, man. There were people, I'd go through aid stations. I could hear him behind me saying, this guy's done. He's not going to make it. He will not get to that finish line. You know, I'm not out here to impress anybody. I can only do what I can do. And that's give it my best. And I'll tell you one thing, I'm not going to quit. About mile 21 or 22, I felt great. I felt like I just started the race, and I took off. This is it. This is the pace you need to finish. And the guy came up and says, I don't know what, what's going on. You're going to make it. You're going to make the cutoff. He has an hour left to finish, so it's looking like he might be in at about 11, 59, 59. 
And uh, all of a sudden, my body shut down again. Nothing. Couldn't run. I'm walking. And then I get to the turnaround, and I'm like, you got to go, man. You got to go. I lost the time back. And I come over this hill, and all my friends that had come were wearing their Iron Man shirts, and they all got around me like, you, you, can, you can finish. You can finish this. Come on, man. You can do it, buddy. Yeah. Come on, You're back, buddy. You're back. This I sure could see the lights. I could hear the finish line. And to finish, I needed to run a six-minute mile. I turned this corner, and I took off. I don't know what happened. I was running as fast as I could ever run in my life. I'd just done 25 miles. But I ended up running 840, and I missed the cutoff by three minutes. But I crossed the finish line. And I never quit. But, you know, I look back over that race, and it changed me. It made me realize that it's not about how much you weigh, and it's not about what you've done in your past. It's about what you're doing. Our bodies, they're amazing. I shouldn't have been able to do what I did that day, but my body kept going. There's something about pushing yourself beyond your limits that people need to do once in their life. They need to take the chance one time to see what they really can do. And once you do it, you're never the same. Man, hold on.